Hey everybody, this time of year we're getting lots of questions about poisonous plants. So we wanted to hop on here and answer some of those questions for you. Today we're going to talk about three different plants that you need to know before you head out on an outdoor adventure. The first is poison hemlock. Poison hemlock is a non-native plant that was brought over here by the Europeans. It's now fairly widespread and it is one that you need to be aware of. It's most famously known as having an extract in it that's the poison that killed Socrates. So this can be a very dangerous plant. However, you do have to ingest the plant in order to have any sort of reaction to it. In our yard, we have found some and we are trying to eradicate it. The best method is just to educate your children, let them know what it is, and then begin the eradication or removal process of poison hemlock. So of the three that I'm talking about today, poison hemlock is probably the least um, scary one to me because my kids aren't out ingesting it or eating poison hemlock. Next up is poison ivy. Poison ivy is widely known here in Iowa. This one actually is a native plant to Iowa and it has lots of wildlife benefits. Unfortunately, from a human perspective, we can definitely have reactions to it, which makes it a less desirable plant. But in terms of the whole ecosystem, it's definitely beneficial. So poison ivy, if if you are allergic or have a reaction to poison ivy, if you come in contact with the oil from this plant, then you can have a reaction somewhere between typically 24 and 48 hours after contact. Now there's people who can roll around in poison ivy and there's people like me who can do the laundry of the kids who roll around in poison ivy and they're the ones who get it and the ones that roll around don't have any reaction. So it's a little bit hit or miss. It's kind of interesting how it works. But those who are allergic, if they come in contact with the oil, which can even be airborne, they will have a reaction to it. So you need to have a good skill of identifying poison ivy, especially if you're allergic to it. So poison ivy, leaves of three, leave them be, is the very common saying that we all know, but there's lots of plants here in Iowa that have three leaves. Poison ivy, all of the leaves come from one center point, and the two outside leaves, so we have our center one and our two outside ones, the two outside ones wear mittens, and they have a rough or jagged edge on the outside. So that's the way that I most commonly identify poison ivy. Now here's a trick. Poison ivy can grow as a vine. So we have three different um, vine growing plants here in Iowa. We have poison ivy, we have Virginia creeper, and we have grapevine. Now those are the three most common types of vine. Um, grapevine has a bark-like look to the vine. And then Virginia creeper and poison ivy both have like a hairy um, vine look to it. Virginia creeper has five leaves and poison ivy has three. This is one, I think it's Virginia creeper that seems to trip people up, or maybe it's baby oak trees that trip people up, but we do not have poison oak in Iowa, so you don't need to worry about that. So far, we've covered the poison hemlock, poison ivy, and let's hop on to the third one, which is wild parsnip. This is the plant here in Iowa that I am most nervous about. I can handle poison ivy, we can deal with poison hemlock because we know not to ingest it, but wild parsnip has a terrible reaction to it. If you come in contact with the juices from the stem of wild parsnip and those juices are reacting to the sunlight, then you actually have like a photochemical burn that is going on on your skin. I have scars from a reaction when I was a child, so this can create awful blisters and a painful, painful burn. So wild parsnip, definitely we need to know how to identify it. This is something that likes to grow in full sun. So our ditches um, this time of year, late May, June, even into July, there's lots of wild parsnip. Really it can be a beautiful plant, flowers yellow. Um, but if you come in contact with the juices from that plant, you immediately want to cover that spot of reaction because if you can minimize or block the sunlight, then that chemical reaction is stopped. So cover it if at all possible, if you come in contact with it and then get inside immediately. Wild parsnip is definitely one that you need to watch out for. Poison hemlock, don't ingest it. 
wild parsnip, try not to touch it if you do cover it up. Poison ivy, there are two different things that I recommend having on hand for. The first one is Xanthil. This is a treatment scrub that we love. It has a little bit of a grit to it. So once you activate this, um, the chemicals within the medicine and the treatment here, you rub it into your skin and it actually kind of um, has some sort of reaction with the oils from poison ivy. And it really does help in um, speeding up the treatment of the poison ivy. The other thing that we love is a product. It's a homeopathic treatment called Russ Tox, and we swear by it. Not only can you take it as a treatment when you know you're having a poison ivy reaction, but you can also take it as a preventative method. So if I know the kids have been trompsing through the woods and they've probably been around poison ivy or I've been around poison ivy, we'll take it as a preventative. My son used to get poison ivy terribly. We'd been to the ER. We had all sorts of problems. When we started using Rust Tox, we haven't had any issues since. So he might have a small reaction. We get right on using the Rust Tox and it goes away. So seriously, we absolutely love this product and we recommend that you try it. Both of those, if you need to talk to your doctor before using them, certainly that's a great idea. But for us and our family, they have worked great. What's important to know with poison hemlock, poison ivy, and wild parsnip is that all of these can be avoided or treated. And so you need to know that these should not stop you on going on any awesome outdoor adventures here in Iowa. So we hope that you hit the trail and have all sorts of fun with your next adventure.